The Triassic period, spanning from approximately 252 to 201 million years ago, marks the beginning of the Mesozoic era. It was a time of great transformation as it followed the Permian-Triassic mass extinction event, the most devastating of the Big Five extinctions. This massive loss of life provided new opportunities for the surviving species to evolve and diversify, leading to the emergence of numerous new forms of terrestrial animal life. Most importantly, from our later perspective, the Triassic saw the earliest dinosaurs and the first mammalia forms. The Triassic is divided into three epochs, the early Triassic, 252 to 247 million years ago, the middle Triassic, 247 to 237 million years ago, and the late Triassic, 237 to 201 million years ago. The late Triassic takes up a lion's share of the time for this period, and it's also the time when the dinosaurs and mammalia forms came on board. Let's now consider much of the animal life that existed on land during the Triassic period. We'll start with exploring the story of the archosaurs, a clade of diapsids. While the Mesozoic era is largely the story of diapsid dominance, we'll also meet the synapsids, and it's from the synapsids that mammalia forms emerged. Let's get into it. The Triassic period witnessed the rise of various terrestrial reptiles, including the earliest dinosaurs. These reptiles were the archosaurs, who picked up in the early Triassic descended from the starting in the latest Permian, archosauriforms. Basal archosauriforms include Proterosuchidae species, who were superficially crocodile-like and ranged from some 4.5 to 12 feet long. They diversified in the aftermath of the Permian extinction and filled many terrestrial and semi-aquatic niches. Archosaurs would become the largest and most ecologically dominant terrestrial vertebrates from the Middle Triassic period up until the demise of the dinosaurs. These diapsid reptiles gave rise to two lineages, the Pseudosuchians and the Avametatarsalians. Let's first consider the Pseudosuchians who first appeared in the early Triassic. Pseudosuchians were a diverse group of reptiles that include all living crocodilians and all archosaurs more closely related to crocodilians than to birds. Pseudosuchians came to dominate the carnivorous niches on land and would mostly die out in the end Triassic extinction, opening the room for the dinosaurs to become dominant. Throughout the Middle and Late Triassic, Pseudosuchians underwent extensive diversification, giving rise to several distinct lineages. There were the Roisuchids, a group of generally large-bodied carnivorous archosaurs who were apex predators in many terrestrial ecosystems. There were the Poposauroids of the Late Triassic. They encompassed both bipedal and quadrupedal forms and displayed significant anatomical disparity. The Late Triassic also witnessed the emergence of crocodilomorphs, the lineage leading to modern crocodilians. These basal and early crocodilomorphs were small, agile predators, including the basal Sphenosuchians like Saltopasuchus and the early crocodilomorphs like Hesperosuchus. And these basal and early crocodilomorphs were the only Pseudosuchians to survive the end Triassic extinction. Edosaurs were heavily armored, often herbivorous reptiles that also belonged to the Pseudosuchian lineage. They were characterized by their generally wide flat bodies covered in bony plates which provided protection against predators and they fed on low-growing vegetation. Now for the other major archosaur lineage line, the Avametatarsalians. The Avametatarsalian lineage contains all archosaurs more closely related to birds than to crocodilians. For Mesozoic history, their more important members were the dinosauriforms, which were the reptiles that eventually gave rise to the dinosaurs. Avametatarsalians further include the earliest vertebrates known to have powered flight, the pterosaurs. At the base of the Avametatarsalia are the Aphanosauria, of the Middle Triassic. Early Avametatarsalians include the Lagerpetids and the Silosaurids. Lagerpetids were likely closer to the coming pterosaur lineage than the coming dinosauromorphs, 
Silosaurids, on the other hand, are the sister group to Dinosauria, representing the clade of non-dinosaur dinosauriforms. Examples of Silosaurids include Acylosaurus of the Middle to Late Triassic and Silosaurus of the Late Triassic. In the Late Triassic, both true dinosaurs and pterosaurs enter the scene. One early dinosaur was Eoraptor, a basal sauropodomorph. These early dinosaurs were small to medium-sized predators that cheer the landscape with a diverse array of other reptiles, though they would shortly go on to dominate the terrestrial ecosystems of the Mesozoic era. They're divided into two major groups, the Ornithischians and the Sauriscians, which includes both sauropodomorphs and theropods. And these early forms laid the foundation for the many more famous forms that would appear later in the Jurassic and Cretaceous periods. A likely early Ornithischian was Pisanosaurus of around 229 million years ago. A basal sauropodomorph from around 230 million years ago was Saturnalia, and a slightly later one is Platyosaurus. As for Triassic theropods, a probably basal theropod was Eodromaeus, and one of the largest Triassic theropods was Lilian Stemis, who could reach up to 17 feet long. Continuing the Avometatarsalian story, we now turn to the ear as the Triassic saw the emergence of the flying pterosaurs. These reptiles had wings that were formed by a membrane of skin, muscle, and other tissues stretching from the ankles to a dramatically elongated fourth finger. Pterosaurs filled various ecological niches and played a significant role in the Mesozoic ecosystems as aerial predators and scavengers, with these early examples from the late Triassic getting it going. In addition to the archosaurs, another group of amniotes, the synapsids, thrived during the Triassic. Included amongst the synapsids are all animals more closely related to mammals who emerged from this lineage than to sauropsids. Sauropsids are the other major group of amniotes to which all the aforementioned diapsids belong. The synapsid therapsids were hit hard in the end Permian extinction, and only dicynodonts and eutheriodonts made it through. It's through a clade of eutheriodonts, the cynodonts, that mammals would emerge. Starting with the early Triassic, surviving through the Permian extinction, was the herbivorous dicynodont therapsid Lystrosaurus which was among the first vertebrates to recover from the Permian-Triassic extinction event, becoming by far the most common terrestrial vertebrate of the early Triassic. Closely related to Lystrosaurus are the Canamere forms, who lasted farther to the end Triassic. The Eutheriodonts saw Cynodont Thranaxodon in the early Triassic. The Therocephalians, a suborder of eutheriodonts, went extinct about 20 million years into the Triassic, while the other eutheriodonts, the cynodonts, would last through and beyond the Triassic. Middle Triassic cynodonts include Cynonathus and Diademodon. As the Triassic progressed, cynodonts in general got smaller. An exception to this rule is the 4 meter long late Triassic cynodont, Truchido cynodon. Having evolved from cynodont forebears, picking up around 225 million years ago, the Triassic period saw the first appearance of small, shrew-like mammaliaforms. These early mammaliaforms were likely nocturnal and insectivorous. Early examples from the Triassic are Megazostrodon, Morganucodon, and Haramiavia. While mammals would one day take over the world, and it's from mammals that we will eventually emerge, for the coming Jurassic period, and in fact the rest of the Mesozoic, we'll see the dinosaurs take center stage. If this exploration of the past piqued your interest, remember to hit the like button, share the video with fellow history aficionados, and subscribe to the channel for more content about Earth's history and the extraordinary creatures that once walked its surface. Catch you in the next video.